Hi guys, quick introduction. Uh, so this month for the library assignment I read Wonder Woman Tempest Toss. Um, I'm going to do a little bit about my recommendation now and then move on to the project and then we'll talk more. Um, but I chose this book uh, one, because I love Wonder Woman, and also two, because it was one of the newer ones, and it faces some of the issues going on in the world today. Um, and that was really important to me to learn more about that and analyze that, uh, both as a reader and as a writer. Wonder Woman Tempest Toss is a 187-page graphic novel. I think it is a graphic novel. It follows one single plotline and character arc, all wrapped in a single package. It was published by DC Comics and written by Laurie Halls Anderson, a New York Times bestselling author who focuses on tougher issues like sexual violence and teen issues. The art was done by Leila Del Duca, um, who, in addition to uh, Wonder Woman Tempest Toss, also drew for Scarlet Witch, American Vampire, and the Pantheon Project, and colorist Kelly Fitzpatrick, who is a Hugo nominated co comic colorist and illustrator. The lettering was done by Saida Temafonte. Wonder Woman Tempest Toss is a new origin story for Diane Prince. The basics are the same. Diane is born at Themyscira's uh, queen who made her out of clay and breathed life into her. She then grew amongst the Amazons feeling different, weaker from uh, than them. The story truly starts once uh, she hits her 16th birthday when she believed she would no longer be different. When that didn't happen and outsiders washed up on the shore, she discovered that uh, she does gain Amazonian type strength when she does what she feels is the right thing. So she goes against her mother's wishes and saves them from drowning, um, but while doing so she gets cut off from the mascara um, and this is the end of Act 1 and ends on page 48. Um, from there, she goes through uh, a lot of changes. She finally realizes the issues facing refugees and immigrants in the world. She, but uh, because of the information and lessons that she's learned on the mascara, she's able uh, to get an opportunity to go to America and utilize those skills to help other people. As she adapts to this new world around her, she does make some friends and learns about the issues going on in America specifically, like homelessness and tra child trafficking. And then once the main enemy is introduced and Diana realizes her purpose, the act ends. Um, and this is approximately pages 49 to 149. Act 3 finishes up the story with pages 150 to 187, and this is where everything kind of wraps up. Um, Diane is introduced to the villain, she figures out who she is, um, and begins to realize why she was uh, taken away from Themyscira. Um, she ends up saving a bunch of children from a human trafficking ring, and, re and really comes into her place in America. Uh, the story has a very clear beginning, middle, and end, and at first the uh, oh, excuse me. At first, the goal was for her to get back to Themyscira as quickly as possible, but when she sees all of the issues going on in the world, she moves into the role of a protector um, of that local area and eventually, as we know, as Wonder Woman um, and the entire world. Uh, this switch in roles is probably one of the most pronounced parts of her character development because she does go from this uh, innocent little girl with an idealized view of the world and, uh, because she was raised in such a calm, protected environment. Uh, granted, she was raised by the Amazons, but still calm, collected, um, compared to other parts of the world. Um, and she had no idea about the true darkness that surrounds the everyday life outside of the island. Um, so switching into that more protector role and taking on the mantle of protecting um, and following, uh, as the, the story will show you, uh, kind of a goddess-is-influenced path um, is really the, the big overarching character uh, story for her. Um, when it comes to a technical side of things, this comic has, is honestly really beautifully written. It was one of my favorites so far. Um, it was easy to read, the transitions were so that it flowed so easily and it was really great to get sucked into it and experience things from this side of the world. Um, partly with the story and partly with all of the new knowledge that I have as uh, a comic book writer and enthusiast. Um, 
in the pages, the creative team sets up the transition so nicely using many different methods. First, they use a wide shot um, in this particular page uh, to set up the entire park, and then a very small panel in the corner to add some more information and character reaction. Then they use an action to action style of transition that McLeod talk talked about um, to show more of what Diane is feeling, getting introduced to this tiny little paradise um, after everything that she's gone through. And it all flows so smoothly and is easy to follow. Um, these next pages show uh, my examples of directional flow. The captions and the dialogue bubbles literally flow in the same direction, and that diagonal, uh, to bring the reader's eye to the proper place. And the art adds to this by showing an opposite direction to cross between the panels and just make everything pop out a little bit more. We talked a lot about the Z pattern style uh, of directional flow um, when it comes to comic pages, and this one shows a really good example of that, because uh, one, the Z pattern is a very easy one to follow, um, but you can see the Z clearly, um, and it just helps lead the writer along without realizing that we're being let, read along. I think that's a really important part about comic writing in general is that the reader doesn't necessarily know what's going on and that they're being coerced. On the topic of transitions, McLeod has six types of transitions, moment to moment, uh, action to action, subject to subject, um, those kind of things. Um, non sequitur too, um, which honestly I don't think there was a single example of that one in this story. Um, but they did have a lot of moment to moments, um, like on page 31 when we see Diane uh, climb up the tree, each panel is Diane climbing further up the tree moment by moment. Then on page 74 you can see an example of an action, action by action transition. Diane sees a homeless woman sleeping, takes off her sweater, gives it to the woman, gives her food and water, but it doesn't show each individual slow movement. Like she's not taking a step, then taking another step. She's taking, doing one type of action, then one type of action, then one type of action. Uh, another one that you can see clearly in this comic is scene to scene. Uh, on page 21, um, you can see uh, an example of this. With scene to scene, it's important that some form of time passes and the audience um, can register that and make inferences based off of it. So you see them talk about, uh, the 16 year old Diane talks about her lessons as a blacksmith as a child, and then we see her as a child performing these lessons. So it's easy to understand, easy to go with. Uh, the final technical aspect today is about how each page is used as a mini comic. I can't think of a better example than pages 10 and 11 of this. Here it literally tells the story of the five goddesses that created the mascara, um, f literally from beginning to end, from the, the digging of the energy and bringing everything together um, to what the mascara is all about, and it tells that full story. Um, as far as like interesting tidbits and additional commentary on this. Um, I think the reason why I love Wonder Woman so much is most of the time, since the very beginning of Wonder Woman's creation, the writers and artists that worked on these projects weren't afraid to tackle tough issues. Um, so with like Tempest Tossed, uh, the writer and artist tackled those big, big issues of immigration, refugees, uh, human child trafficking uh, and homelessness in America as well as uh, the effects that all of that and the things that we do have on our environment. Um, and they do all of this in one single 187 page graphic novel um, that had a real impact. Like you could you could feel the, the pain and the emotion that went with all of this. And the, that's the kind of stuff that I love. That's that's what I want to be a writer for. I want to tell stories that make you feel what other people are feeling. Um, and then just as a fun tidbit, I found out that the artist, um, Leila Del Duca, also worked on Hellboy, which is also one of my favorites. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with somebody who works on all your favorites. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So this was Wonder Woman Tempest Tossed. It was a fun project to work on and honestly one of my new favorite graphic novels.